What's happening, good people? Thanks for tuning in. Having a beer with Tony Greer. I just want you to know I'm holding up my end of the bargain with a freezing cold Bud Light and uh, a cooler of two to back it up. Um, I'm very excited to hear a couple of questions about anything, but we're going to start talking about markets. I'm going to answer a couple of questions that have been sitting there in the queue. And um, I'm going to just go right into a short pitch on what I think about the world. I'd love to hear any kind of push pushback or agreements or uh, change the subject if you like. We're going to try to keep it rolling here and I'm going to try to stay in my wheelhouse. I may not answer questions that I have no answer to or just pass on them if you're writing them in and I don't have a view. But if you keep them coming, we'll keep this going live as long as we can. I don't really have any place to go. So um, the way I'm looking at the world right now, which is on my usual uh, extremely short term basis, you know, over the time frame over the next couple of weeks, what I've see what I see happening is first I sense a broad recession imminent sentiment on Twitter that I think is very real and vibrant and may be a hundred percent correct. As I always say, I'm not a biologist and I don't know if we're going into or coming out of a recession. I know the market saw a recession with two negative quarters of GDP growth. I know I saw the yield curve plunge into the abyss in reaction to that. I saw the S&P pound 35.30 low and rally back out of that hole. And so that's kind of how that recession scenario played out in my mind. So whether we go there or not, I'm going to tell you that I think the S&P may have discounted it for the short term, right? And that's how I am, right? I'm not going to tell you where we're going to be in a month. I don't know if we're going to retrade to the highs. I don't think we're going to retrade to the lows anytime soon. I think the S&P is going to be sideways for a while. So let's get to why. Um, of the most important developments, the dollar has turned lower. I think that I'm going with that as a base case this year. We saw the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan up at the highs intervening that turned the dollar um, at a time when nobody thought the dollar was going to stop going up. So I think that's really relevant. And now we've got the talk of all central bank digital currencies. We've got the talk of the BRICS and their own um, markets of commodities uh, that they're going to try to trade in all different currencies, I think, from you know yuan to ruble to anything else that they have to. Um, and it looks like that's could be the direction that the narrative at least is going. So it keeps me bearish the dollar. There's my tailwind for my bullish commodity trade. Um, I'm still leaning on that supply side story, maybe a little bit too much, just like everybody else, but it's very real. And at a certain point, when you take the barrels away, the price goes up. And I feel like that's what we're dealing with now. Um, and I think we're seeing some good price action very recently in the fact that the crude oil market has formed a little wiggle formation at the bottom. That's when a low lands in between the previous two lows and that forms a bottom. And so far we've had three big up days since that move happened. So alongside that move, there's one other thing that I'm gonna talk about before uh, I start answering questions. The most relevant move that I've seen on the screen is this 50 basis point return, uh, return rally in break evens. Right. So suddenly break evens have stopped tanking. They bounced off of 220, which was their previous low, 2.2 percent several times, had a down and back to 2.10 and back up through there. And we basically carved through the 150, uh, 50 and 100 day moving averages. And we're up to 2.50 percent at the close today. So that's a 40 basis point move in five year break evens. And to me, that leans, you know, that lends to the idea of commodity strength. It's probably picking up on commodity inflation and things like that. So we'll see how this pans out. I'm going to start with Eva Ad, <coughs> excuse me, who asked a question about what are my favorite base metal ETFs um, and would I add them to my 401k? Well, I have some of them in my 401k. I think XME is one of my favorite ones. It's industrial metals and mining. It includes gold miners. It includes copper miners like Freeport. Um, it includes some of the other big industrials in that space. So that's a great one. And I think COPEX, C-O-P-X, is going to be uh, a really good option if this shortage in copper persists and price continues to go higher. So those are the things that I'm looking at most recently, Eva. And let's see what else I can answer down the 
line here. Um, oh, here, let's ask this one right here. Tony, is it time to come back on the uranium trade? Uh, yeah, let me just put the chart in front of me of URA, the uh, uranium ETF. Because I know that we are chiseling away at the upside of a really, really compelling pennant flag that the uranium URA ETF, and that's the uranium producers, um, like Cameco, have been in, right? We broke out the top side of the pennant flag, the flat bottom being at about $17, $18. We broke up through the moving averages, up through the top of the pennant flag at 22 or so, traded up to 24 and back down. So I think that's reacting to the fact that we are going to have to turn towards nuclear energy. I think the world seems like it's going to be OK with that down the road once we get the politicians to understand that the current platitudes are going to collide with physics at some point and we will see failures in the ESG as, uh, excuse me, failures in that whole entire pivot to carbon neutral um, to provide base load power, we're going to have to turn to things like nukes. So as we see states and countries get more and more friendly, it doesn't shock me that this ETF is breaking out. So let's see what else we have um, in the line here. Thoughts on the State of the Union? Not going there. Love the question, though. Um, why don't I drink coffee? I'm going to answer that because I want this to continue to be a special interest interview. You can ask me about rock music. You could ask me about anything that you see here in my office, or you can ask me about sports or whatever it is. Um, but let's go back to that. Why don't I drink coffee? Uh, because it's bad for my tummy. I drank a huge bucket of iced coffee every day that I sat down as an equity sales trader. And finally, it blew a hole in my stomach. So now I'm Red Bull only, and I do have one of those a day. Um, Let's see what we got. Let me find the next one. Are IPAs best beer or not? I had a phase that I was enjoying IPA, and then I decided to just be true to myself and understand that I really love Budweiser, Sapporo, Pacifico, and Peroni. And those are the ones that I really stick with whenever I can now. Uh, I would love to hear your take on offshore drilling market, rig. I mean, yeah, rig. Tidewater, what VAL is, which one again? That is Valaris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's just look at those charts. You know, there's a reason the oil services industry was the top performing sector on my leaderboard last year, up about 60 something percent. Uh, I think it was. It is, they are set up for success for sure. You know, they really, um, they all tightened up their operations and cleaned up their balance sheet through the 2015 you know, a uh, washout that they had. So they're all financially stable and in really good condition compared to where they were five years ago or 10 years ago, say. So I think that's why Schlumberger is literally just jumping out of the gate. Um, but yeah, this whole sector looks good to me in general. I heard that there are places where they're getting $400,000 a day for rigs, which is like an astronomical number. Um, that's why these stocks are breaking out to new highs. I think they're going to continue to lead and kind of battle it out with refiners at the top of the energy performance. So we'll see what happens there. Hold on. Wow, these are slightly coming in here. Uranium, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Thoughts on Bitcoin? I'm bullish, KT. I mean, I'm I'm long Ethereum on my view matrix. Um, and when I look at the Bitcoin chart, you know, we've got a giant um, up and back, you know, with the laser eyes at the highs and have fun staying poor and all that. And, uh, you know, the thing cratered flatline. It's been flatlining for a long time. We've got the um, FTX, Sam Bankman Freed blow up at the bottom that I think is still panning out. And it doesn't shock me that the sort of path of resistance, least, least resistance feels like it's higher now. Um, I think that Bitcoin and crypto will probably rally and you can tell me that I'm wrong and this may be completely incorrect, but I think that they can rally with the, you know, continued spreading talk of central bank digital currencies that's become per pervasive enough to think that it, you're at least going to see them take swipes at it or there's going to be some form of it, um, you know, right in front of you at some point. So I think that could be one of the things driving I like this, Alan, um, about the idea for Belgium beer. I do like many of those. Um, trying to think of the one that I had. Uh, it had one of those funny Belgian names that ends in a Chamay or Chamay or something like that. That was fantastic. 
dollar index seems to have bounced and gained some momentum. This is a great one. I wanted to, I was hoping somebody would talk about this because I spend my days staring at the dollar index like this. Um, yeah, you know, bullish price action turns it around. I, well, excuse me, I would say negative sentiment probably turned it around in the short term. It had an oversold bounce to the 50-day moving average. All I see in the dollar index is a chart running into a burning building, if I may use that analogy, because all I see are thick crossing over layers of horizontal resistance, um, you know, coming down at steep angles, other angles. And I don't think that the dollar is going to make it through all that resistance this year. Um, I think that rates can still go higher. I think that they can go higher in other places on the globe faster than they go higher in the U.S., because we probably may have that recession drag um, on us. And I know that'll affect the whole world. But this time we have the offset of the China reopening, um, I think. And like I said, I'm not a bi biologist, but that's how I kind of look at things. So let me get to a couple of questions. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to miss too many. Telecaster or Stratocaster, Bernardo Reyes. I love that question. I have a Fender American Stratocaster. I tend to shun the Telecaster because all I see when I picture Telecaster are people like Tommy Morello and Bruce Springsteen holding them. Great question, though. Uh, great videos. Jason Rupp, thank you very much. You're a gentleman and a scholar for that compliment. Um, any view on Tesla? Oh, always. Absolutely. People ask me for my view on Tesla. And one day I look at the chart and say, oh, I'm really bullish. And I'll, two weeks later, I'll look at the chart and say, really bearish. Two weeks later, oh, this thing's going to go up a hundred bucks. And so it's fun to check out. At last sale. Yeah. Another stock that to me is running into that, um, burning, uh, fire building of, uh, resistance there. You know, it made it through the 50 day, which was easy pickings. It had enough momentum to get through the 100 day. But now, if you notice, we're trading those lows of 2021 that it couldn't get uh, bounced off of. And the, excuse me, the lows of 2022 that it sort of collapsed down through at around 200. So I think that this is going to fail somewhere between here and 250 and make another leg lower. That's how I'm looking at it. I still have a feeling Elon has to sell stock to pay for his uh, Twitter shenanigans. Hang on a second. Thank you. What's on the turntable right now? Widespread Panic uh, Space Wrangler. I just got it in the mail today. It's one of my favorite albums. I couldn't wait to hear it on vinyl. I had this new Bob Marley vinyl um, record player that I just purchased, and it has been an amazing, amazing eye-opening and ear-opening experience. I, I urge everybody to re-listen to music the way it was intended to sound with specific tracks being recorded and kind of overlapping after it comes out of the speaker in your head instead of before it comes out of the speaker. And that's the way I grew up as a kid, listening to records directly with my dad's headphones plugged directly into the turntable. and. Um, it's just an unbelievable way to listen to music. So I urge everybody to give it a try if you're as enthusiastic as I am. Uh, Sid Barrett used a telly. Good point. Good point, Bernardo. I'm a fan. Um, let me just see here. Shimei, there's the one. Thank you very much, Slash. Uh, deeply inverted yield curve. All right, that's a great one, the aviator right there. How is it possible about stocks going higher? Well, I think that it's possible that stocks are going higher because we just came out of a massive negative sentiment bubble into another bubble of sentiment where the stock market still has to go lower because of the recession. So the higher it goes, the more reasons we're coming up with for it to go back lower. And that's what I don't really um, I don't really look at the markets like that. Right. Um, the inverted yield curve. Another thing. That is the reason that um, my number one post-it stamped to my board over here is called nothing is linear. What does it mean? It means you either take profits on trades that are sailing your direction, or you can expect them to be sailing violently in the other direction tomorrow. And it means that some of those trades that you might feel really strong conviction on are kind of weighing against you. And you kind of give it another chance because you know that everything is so whipsaw in every direction that you get your trade back. And I use that to that's what I've been using as a mantra to stay long natural resources, which has worked, as you can see. So all of this yield curve just means is that expect waterfalls 
in the stock market, expect big moves in the bond market in both directions. And that just makes for a very slippery equity market. You got to trade around it. Great, great question, though. I love where you're going here. Um, let me see if I continue to. I just want to not skip over too many questions here. Bullish or bearish silver? I tell you, J Crypto, I'm, I'm, being, I'm bullish precious metals. I think it was a big recovery after seven months da straight down last year in gold. I think we held the right levels technically. I think that it's doing all the right things again technically. I think that it's reacting. I worry that it might have been reacting to yield stabilizing, if not heading a little bit lower. And if yields start going higher, which I anticipate, that may slow gold down a little bit. So I'm moderately bullish gold. I you know, never expect huge things for me just as a side story, because now first we're talking about gold as traders. Now I'm putting on my um, my sort of long term investor cap, which is the way I invest in gold. When it looks cheap, I buy physical and I put it in my safe for hopefully um, being able to hand it over to my kids on my deathbed um, and not ever having to use it one day. But it's obviously that sort of hedge that makes me sleep a little better just in case our currency comes under direct fire like it is now with um, all kinds of other countries, maybe quoting currencies, trying to get rid of the petrodollar, as fat, uh, quoting commodities and other currencies trying to get rid of the petrodollar as fast as they can. So that's why I own gold. Uh, I think gold is the asset that has the best chance of being there in roughly the same shape. If you were to get knocked out for 550 or 500 years and you wanted to see where it was when you got back. So that's where I have a, a certain allocation of my personal um, wealth or lack thereof in physical gold. Uh, let's see here. The dollar we discussed. Come on now. I love the turntable. Do I like Life Begins at 100 million? Thomas Moore. Yes, I like Life Begins at 40 million. Great Bogman album. If you never heard it, get down with that one. Um, TG, what are the other post-its that we can't see? Slash, the only one that uh, you can't see is nothing is linear. And don't forget to take profits, right? That's it. That's all I got up there this year. Um, I like the Jeff Beck um, suggestion, blow by blow on vinyl. Thank you very much. I'm, I am looking for like outstanding vinyl albums. That's one of the reasons that I just got Space Wrangler by Widespread Panic. And a little side story about that album. That is the story. Uh, that is the album that when I first moved to New York City um, for the first year, I lived in this little tiny dump. This album had just come out. I was probably listening to it on a giant spinning CD recorder or something like that. And it was the time of my life when I would go to work. I would go get a huge workout and come back to my dumpy apartment and cook myself a lousy dinner and sit in front of the Ranger game. And I realized that if I smoke some grass and listen to Space Wrangler with the Ranger game sound off and the lights down, it was a really nice way to enjoy the Ranger game and unwind from a uh, tough day and a hard workout. So that's still a good policy. Don't be afraid to try it. Um, rest in peace, Jeff Beck, indeed. I listened to a lot of his music uh, shortly after he passed and forgot how unbelievable he was. You got a Sapporo for this one, Nomas. For my money, could be the best beer on the market. Canadian energy stock valuations are more attractive than U.S. energy stock valuations. And will this close the gap ahead? KJ, I only answer this. Because I've only felt that there was, I'll say this, there was a time in my life when I was just starting off and learning the equity market and very, very conscious of valuations. And I'm never going to tell anybody that they're right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm going to say that they got me caught up the wrong way more times than not. Worrying about what a stock should be valued. I'm not the one that decides that. The stock market does, right? And I feel like if I have a better chance getting the direction of the world right, then the valuations will take care of themselves. And that's the only reason that I wanted to touch on that. I hope that wasn't insulting. Uh, I'm sure if you're here on Real Vision, you got thick skin anyway. Um, let's see here. Eva, Ed, you asked that. We talked about China reopening copper. We did this already, hon. Joshua asked, the recent train disaster in Ohio. Uh-oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go here. Should I go? Oh, no, 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 no. I have no idea on that. That's uh, a very specific, specific trade. The collapse on natural gas, Mazine, that's a great question. Um, Momento, I want to get the chart in front of me. 
So what's interesting enough is that I thought that it might have been turning down here because if, as you can see, natural gas has just plummeted from, uh, you know, $7 to $2, $10 to $2, which is if you've been following the natural gas market, something that is totally characteristic of that commodity. I've seen this thing go from two to 12, two to 12, two to 12, probably five, six times in my career now. I've seen guys get wealthy on just one of those moves. Um, and I'm really a little bit afraid of it because I've seen more guys go broke than I have guys get rich trading natural gas. So, you know, we, the technical top on the thing was staggering. It got help from Mother Nature. It's still getting help from Mother Nature. Just when you think it bottoms in this straight line down, it has another outside day down to make a new low like it did today. I am running from natural gas, not even walking away from it. So I don't know where the bottom is. Uh, the bottom is going to be when Mother Nature gets colder than should be in the winter or hotter than it should be in the summer. Or there's a big enough issue, excuse me, in Europe across the pond that it drives global natural gas prices higher alongside um, what is evident, uh, what is eventually going to become another crisis over there in Europe. I think heading into this winter, but we'll find out. Um, okay, enough babbling on natural gas. So, Mazin, great question. When does it bounce back? I have no idea, man. Not until Mother Nature starts cooperating. The chart shows no signs of bottoming. We have a 2020 low of uh, a buck forty. So you can buy it in line and get halved still. I'm not really into this trade at all. Um, no, I'm into this trade when I feel like it's turned and that uh, everybody's still bearish, but we'll see what happens. You should get Mirage by Camel. Another great suggestion. I'm going to have to write these down. Um, Russian ADRs, I wish I could help you, Alex. I do not know. Uh, Listen Like Thieves, 100%. Fabulous album. Great. Yeah, best game of the year, Rangers, Michael. Holy smokes. I was on the edge of my seat in this office um, watching every split second of that game, not getting any work done. And uh, that was really rejuvenating. I looked up after, like during that game, to see what Friday night tickets are against the Seattle Kraken, who have the same record as the Rangers, pretty much really solid team. And they are like 1500 bucks in the first section off the ice. And they are literally $500, $400 to sit in the Chase Skybridge. So tell me more about the recession when I also can't get a reservation for five at Rowell's in two weeks, okay? Anyway, best game of the year, 100,000, 100%. Time to come back on Walt Disney. Uh, no, I'm, I mean, did you see that, that horrible thing like denying Lincoln freed the slaves that Disney just put out? No, don't buy that thing until, it, it, until it's auctioned off in parts. Um, my favorite people to follow on Twitter, Big Mike, um, I love my pal Doomberg. Uh, he's a close friend and I like the way he operates on Twitter. I love Jim Iorio. I think he's a great character. Um, let's see. Tracy shy girl is so informative and awesome. Um, I'm trying to think who are the real characters on Twitter that I really appreciate. Um, Josh Young is super helpful. Alex Epstein, you know, I like following, you know, his, consistent book sale um but the theme to fossil future is really interesting for me um you know i love uh mike greeny when you can get stuff out of him he, he doesn't say a lot but he's a great guy to talk to about things jared dillian's always fun and and you never know what you're gonna get from him on twitter and he's my pal and i love him so that's awesome um man i'm sure there are so many more but i don't want to sit here and rattle off twitter accounts you guys know who they are um let's see Having an 805 beer in Perdono 12 year. Timothy Harris, well done. Barrel sun grown cigar. Somebody's doing it right. Man, that's awesome. If you have any questions, Timothy, let me know. Getting closer to tax season, unfortunately. The ticker on natural gas, Gandalf UNG, if you're looking for the ETF. Uh, State of the Union, what is your thought on it? Saying it sounded mega inflationary to me. Paul, I thought it was a mirror image of anything real going on in the United States. If it was going on and it's real, he really didn't cover it well. And I feel like he spent the whole night trying to talk about healthcare, Medicare, and insulin. And I thought that was kind of cheesy. But anyway, uh, metal streamers, miners, only commodity, which performed best in the next six months. 
So what would you say, metal, metals and mining, or like call it, say, XME, or do you just buy the copper ETF? That's a really good question. Usually when I'm bullish the commodity, I make sure that I am long the commodity. That's the only rule that I have. And there are times, and, and, and if I simplify it to that, um, I think I get, I get to like a, a place where I finally can always be consistent with the trade, right? So for me, it's always the chart that is, has to tell me that I can be bullish this thing or bullish this turnaround or this opportunity here. So if I'm bullish the chart and I'm bullish the commodity and the commodity all looks good, then I'm going to stay in the commodity. I have to have it on, right? The, the rule is if you're bullish the commodity for the reasons in the commodity, you know, steep backwardation, tight supplies, uh, threats to supply, you know, um, national resource nationalism, all kinds of factors that are creeping into the picture nowadays then be long the commodity, right? If, if it's backward dated and you have the chance to, be long the futures, right? Be long the professional way to trade the thing. You're always gonna get eaten up a little bit in the ETF roles. Um, but there, that being said, the ETFs do track the market close enough for a layman to be able to enjoy the returns of. So I think that's really important. Um, so in the idea of, this is interesting. I'm going to slow it down for a second here because this is interesting. Underlying commodity versus the stocks. So I bought oil and oil stocks on the lockdown dip, right? I got great cred for that call. It worked out fantastic. Russia invades Ukraine. We're still long oil futures, right? They tack 20% on top of the rally in oil futures in all of a couple of weeks. To me, that's my out in oil futures, right? And I'm not bragging that I sold the highs because I didn't sell the highs, but I sold into the 110s and teens and 20s and never thought for a second to get short, but got out of the futures. Now, I managed to stay in a lot of the stocks that I had through this whole period. Now, I would never have been able to stay in the crude oil trade, but I was vocally flat oil futures looking for a place to potentially get in. And I did get long again and lose money on it. But that was the time where I had the out in the commodity and I took it and the stocks really never broke trend too deeply. Right. So I'm still in the XLE and I'm still in some of the Marathon Petroleum and the Valero and the Exxon that I bought back then because the trend hasn't broken yet. So those are where, you know, you can see how the commodity and the stock get really, really separated at times. And sometimes one will provide massive opportunity that the other one doesn't. And so that's kind of how I look at those. But the one rule that I try to have is if I am bullish the commodity for the commodity's sake, then make sure I have it on. Because a lot of times I think I feel like the commodity has the most realistic, trackable, satisfying, high percentage move. And everything else will probably lag if the commodity story was that bullish as you thought it was. So that's one rule that I have on that. Um, J Rod CC, great, great question. Uh, let me just focus on this here. Younger men giving up on the workforce. Uh, I think it rhymes with the mental health issue that we're having in the country right now, which is t terribly, terribly sad. There's drug issues, there are mental health issues, there's a suicide issue. There, um, you know, where we have more than two sexes now issue. I think that a lot of it is really confusing people. The fact that they're staring down the barrel of extremely uncertain future. So are we, by the way, um, you know, doesn't make it any easier. So people leaving the workforce is a testament, I think, to the way that everybody's been programmed to stand and stare at their phone and not be ambitious. And when life knocks them down, that they should go sit in their basement and chill out for a little while until somebody comes along to help them. Um, that's not the way everybody thinks and nor do I, but that's what I think about younger men giving up on the workforce. My favorite commodity for 2023, J Crypto. I love it. You know why? Because I spend my entire year, as you know, monitoring performance. And all it's ever about is the scoreboard at the end of the year. And I start from day one thinking about how am I going to have the best P&L at the end of the year, all right? And that entails 
you know, knowing how to survive, remembering to take profit, remembering to stop out and things like that. But you want to be in the right sectors of the year when they end the year and, and, you know, winning, right? Last year, we managed to get out of technology's way and we managed to get into natural resources. And some of those natural resources sectors were up 45, 50%. Some of those tech stocks were down 40 or 50%. If people listened to us and affected their portfolio, they saved and made themselves a lot of basis points on that idea. And so that was really, really refreshing. So the way I look at it now is I always look at the commodities performance on the year. Um, And uh, this year, I still think that I'm going to go with oil because oil, I think, is still set up for a later in the year surge. Um, it's going to take a while for supply to get tighter and tighter. And I think that that's what we're going to see again, maybe into this winter. So I'm going to bet on oil being a good performer again this year. I think copper is obviously set up really well, but copper just tends to disappoint the crap out of everybody either direction. Um, so that's how I'm looking at it. Do I own any NFTs? No, I wanted to at one point when I was bullish crypto at the highs, um, I wanted an, uh, a board ape just like everybody else. And then at finally, it became pretty obvious, almost, you know, not 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 anywhere near the highs, but on the way down, that this is not something that you wanted to bid on the way down for rather to wait and see where they settle out. So there may be a day for NFTs. I wouldn't say never on that. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> is the Brazilian market worthwhile? I don't know. I don't know anybody that gets Brazilians. Next question, lacrosse season. That's right, almost, Dave Styles. We're almost there, baby. Um, Freeport going to 100 could happen. How about the chart that is linear, Thomas? Let's see. Well, Freeport, if you're talking about Freeport, it's also got a potential triple top up here, too, so be careful. <coughs> hey, Tony. Yes. Hey, it's Nick here uh, from Real Vision. Really fantastic stuff uh, here going on tonight. A um, lot of great questions, a lot of great answers, and lots of uh, great drinks. I think what you said, you had a Bud Light there or two. Yep. <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering uh, if you mind taking some questions from some of our Real Vision members. Oh, right, I, right, right. I could, I, I could pop over to there and, and, and tell you, no you no need for you to shuffle here. Nope, um, I got him. I got him. Cool, cool, cool. Before we Bye. get into some of those, though, uh, I just want to do a shameless plug here and uh, remind everybody that if you like what you see here, consider hitting that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that bell. So you don't miss a minute of real vision content and profit from knowledge. Uh, all right, Tony. So you got those uh, RV members yes, there? Sorry Questions? about that. I, I messed no that worries. part up. All right. Jordan Radway, UNG seems to have hit rock bottom. Oh, well, we got into that one at least, right? We discussed natural gas. I'm not a buyer of it until it turns, gets above, uh, starts attacking moving averages. Um, it is the kind of trade like WTI right now where the way I would approach it would be to you know, literally start moving money toward it as it gallops across moving averages and see if it finally is the one that goes through all three and keeps running. You know, it's certainly set up on the supply side uh, for one of those situations. Uh, the AI frenzy, man, it's way over my head. You know, I, 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 I literally, I do like, I, I do like probably 20, 25 type of Zoom calls online every week. The technology never gets better. To me, technology is like in general is the biggest mess of a disaster that we've ever encountered. You know, I was a guy that called uh, made telephone calls on landlines, um, you know, got picked up in yellow taxis when they showed up and, you know, Played a lot of handball outside, stick ball. You know, I was always outside riding around on my bike and, and I was an outdoors kid. You know, I'm a Gen Xer. So um, the AI stuff is so far beyond me. I think, quite frankly, that it's utterly laughable that they came out with the first artificial intelligence and it's already skewed to the left, right? They won't make a comment about Donald Trump, but it'll make a comment about Hunter Biden. All I needed to know about chat GPT. Um, And I don't even know what the investments are. It's not something that I could play into. I'm definitely, you know, scared of it taking technology, you know, making it more powerful than it already is. Um, As you can see, basis the Senate hearings today, um, it's already, you know, it's already been proven guilty of violating our free speech. 
Um, and so there's probably heads of big tech companies that belong in jail just on the social media level. So I can't imagine where this could go if artificial intelligence just keeps pounding and pounding away. But it looks like that's what we're going to be dealing with. So I'm going to try to survive it and uh, accept it. Adam, my man. Persistence with the lower dollar. I, I do think the dollar is going to continue to head lower. Like I said, I'm glad I got that question answered before. Um, I'm a seller into these moving averages and aggressively. Um, Jeffrey, war drums, man, is it being priced into commodities? No, man. You know, like that's the one thing where, um, you know, when you perceive that heads of state are talking about nuclear war and there's people talking about nuclear war and this and that, and you're like, you know, this is getting so scary. And you look at the bond market and you look at the stock market and you're like, they're not talking about nuclear war right now. And neither is anybody else that's, you know, in the markets, I shouldn't say, neither is anybody else isn't fair. None of the other markets are really pricing that in. So I tend to discount the drama quite a bit, and I try to. I think it's something that the media that it's not. It's a non-zero probability, of course, but I really think it's something the media latches onto because it happens to get a lot, a lot of clicks, man. Um, that being said, I mean it doesn't look like we have any end date on the Russia uh, support of Ukraine versus Russia. Um, you know, it's the stories out that Hunter Biden's a co-owner of a bio lab there. Um, so it doesn't I doubt that while Joe Biden is president that we get to any sort of accountability um, ar around that story. Uh, but, yeah, it's worth watching. And I think that it's going to be a persistent uh, issue for sure. Robert, fertilizer producers such as nutrient. Yeah. You know, if the natural gas price persists at some point, comes back and rallies keeps ammonia prices high and gets that whole kind of CF trade um, back in motion where if you can export, if you can, um, you know, use it, buy natural gas here and burn it to make ammonia to make fertilizer and export the fertilizer, you've got a great arb going on. That CF industry has had that going on. So I think that could be a uh, situation. <clears throat> and I'm not really an expert on fertilizers. I do trade, um, <clears throat> I do trade mosaic um, you know, from time to time and CF from time to time, but I'm definitely not an expert and I tend to stay in my sector ETF lanes, to be quite honest with you. EQT, yeah, another great name in, in the, uh, is that a refiner or uh, just a general? I'm not sure. I love the chart, Sandra. I hope that you do too. Gordon Pearson. It's gold. Um, no, I'm long. I, I've stayed long gold on my view matrix as something that I'm willing to be responsible for the PL for. So while it's been on there for a while, I'm technically participating in the rally that we've seen. Um, the reality on my trade, though, is I don't really have any intention of selling that. And even as a trade, um, I'm still willing to allocate a certain amount of my trading capital to a gold position. Um, technically it looks a lot better. I like the miners trade. It still looks like they're cheap oversold. Um, you know, they're, they're, they can get cheaper, but in terms of the haircut they've just taken, it still looks like a value valuable play to me. Base metals. Yeah. It looks like, um, I think zinc is still really lagging. If that's the one, if I had the chart correctly in mind, yeah, zinc is the one that's dunked back below its moving averages and can't get out of its own way. So yeah, I could say I'm bearish zinc. Um, Best bet on the Super Bowl, bet on the coin toss, man. Get it over with and then enjoy the rest of the game. That's my strategy. Uh, what three charts look most bullish and bearish to you? Ralph, that's a good question, man. What comes to mind immediately? Most bullish. Mm, Marathon Petroleum, right? I keep saying it. I've, I've been in the name. I like the name. I like the trend. Uh, I, I like the refiner trade as long as crack spreads are going to stay multiples of historic levels, which are providing multiple mar multiple size margins for the refiner sector. I'm going to stay in that trade up 70 something percent last year from the bottom left hand side of your screen to the right hand top right hand corner of your screen in a year that the S&P was down 16 percent. Is that relative strength? I don't know. You tell me, but I like the marathon as my favorite trade. The most bearish chart I can find you know, it's got to be one of the tech sectors after uh, what just happened to them. You know, I, I'm bearish big tech. I'm bearish Apple. I'm bearish Google. I'm bearish, you know, Facebook. They, well, Facebook's already fallen for me. But, you know, they all have these massive, massive topping patterns at the top. In addition 
to the cherry on top, which was like the false breakout of when everything was so perfect for tech uh, after during lockdowns and all the Peloton and Zoom stocks were taking off. Um, it was unbelievable to me to see, you know, that whole thing, you know, go up and come apart. And I still think that there's room to go mostly in the big tech names, because I still know a lot of retail people that came out of last year saying, oh, man, we just survived a tough one. My Facebook was down. My Google was down. My Apple was down and they didn't sell anything. And when stocks are down in the magnitude that they were in last year and breaking trends like they most obviously did last year, that's when I get out of the way. And I did get out of the way. And I advised clients at the beginning of last year to get out of managed accounts or anything that they had that had a share of big tech in it. And that turned out to be a good call. I don't know what changed the tide. Not much of my fundamental picture has changed since we changed the calendar. I still think rates can go higher. Dollar can go lower. S&P can go nowhere. Um, and I'm on the lookout for waterfalls and bonds and stock markets. So that's my kind of view right now on the most bullish and bearish charts right now. John, in the past recession, stock markets did not bottom for many months after the Fed stopped hiking interest rates. Do you think we see lower lows, major? You know, I kind of I went into that a little bit, John. A major credit event? No. I don't know. You know, we we seem to paper over all credit events. So we may see a dislocation in the Treasury market. I think that that's the biggest risk on like on when inflation comes back in the picture. And, you know, I don't I don't think inflation is ever linear. So what we did see was a big blow up and we saw the authorities throw everything they could at the energy prices and at stock prices. And we saw everything back off and we saw all of the big fortune 500 companies participate by firing everybody to just slow the economy down. And eventually inflation, I think, because of the attack on energy supply is going to come right back and start roaring again. So if it's nonlinear and we're in a phase where it's just consolidating and I could see rates going back up, um, then yes, I'm nervous for the stock market's advances. I just don't think that we're at that phase yet. And let's see, what else can I answer the question? I think I answered the question. So that's why I can remain bullish in the short term. Gordon P, who's my team this Sunday? Like I said, I'm going to bet on the coin toss. Um, I'm going to stick with the East Coasters. Some of my best friends are Eagles fans. And whether or not I like the Eagles, I'm happy to uh, see them win. And I wouldn't mind seeing the Eagles and East Coast team, NFC team, win another Super Bowl. Adam again, my man, when you trade, do you ever scale down to charts shorter than daily? If so, I, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so yeah, uh, Adam, I am, um, I'm guilty of, you know, studying all kinds of time frames and actually sometimes letting a certain look of a stock in a certain time frame talk me out of things where I'll be like, okay, this looks good on a super short term 30 minute chart. Hourly chart, you know, looks okay, looks good for my kind of trade. And then I'll go to the daily chart and be like, Ugh, you know, like, I don't know if I want to get into this fight, you know, is I don't think I'm going with trend enough here, or this looks like this could hurt me. So I do look at all the different time frames and study them. And when I, you know, when you get intimate with um, those different time frames in the sectors that you really become a specialist in, like, you know, I'm trying to not take my eye off of um energy and metals and mining and you get to know what all of those charts look like where all of the stochastics are and there are times when you know you'll have three of the four time sectors all line up you know on stochastics and rsi and you're like okay that's enough stars aligned for me to pile into this thing um so yeah of course across time frames across you know slice your trade up you, that's your analysis right that's your risk management you know sometimes also um, I also have a huge um, one rule that I share is that I don't mind sharing is that I have a, a like a Friday checkup on a lot of the, my new positions. If I enter a position during a certain week, I, you know, kind of keep an eye on it. And if it has a horrible close on Friday and I'm in it for a trade, I will just hit the ejector seat and have a beer and a nice weekend and not worry about where that thing is going to open up on Monday. And a lot of times I have to go to you know, shorter term trades to see that coming. You know, I'll, I'll go and say, OK, this looks good on my daily. That's why I bought it. And then go back to an hourly or 30 minute and say, OK, this is my risk. If it fails here, I'm done. And so kind of that's something else that I use it for. 
um, Adam. Adam D with a commodity rebound. Do we get dry bulk shipping rebound? You know, I've, I've um, put a little bit of a noise cancellation policy on the dry bulk sector. Um, I got my wounds and scars as a sales trader at Dalman Rose, which was a great place to be a sales trader in the shipping sector and dry bulk sector. I just realized that they're so difficult to trade that I didn't find that much success in them at all. I didn't find them doing what I thought they should be doing, given what's going on in the markets. And I kind of dropped them as a sector, to be totally honest. Um, Anthony, I wish I could help you there. Um, I got another Adam question. Do you see any technical indicators beyond moving averages? Or, uh, no, I keep it as simple as can be. Um, I started off following trend lines, moving averages, watching stochastics and RSI. And I've gone through phases where I was clamoring for all different kinds of things. And I do have several, you know, my, my technical analysis is probably its strength is in my memory at this point and how long I've seen these pattern recognitions and this, I've done this pattern recognition and seen these things happen over and over. Um, some of the patterns that get you into stocks are just, you know, lo lo just exhaustion and gaps open lower and things like that. Those are the things that I really like to follow, the things that have to do with price action and the things that have to do with streaks. And when you start seeing a stock that puts in several days in the plus column and then several weeks in the plus column and several months in the plus column, man, sometimes that is something you do not want to get in the way of. And if you turn that on its head and see it coming, that's something that you can really profit on when you prop when you uh, get it right and see it coming and it pans out. So hang on one second. Let's see what's next. Ralph, spread trades, oil versus gas? No, I don't. Um, that that complicates the picture for me. I, I like to just be bullish, com bullish the commodity, bearish the commodity, or flat, or or have no opinion the commodity. If I start pitting one sector of the of the commodity against the other, you know, I guess you could do it. You know, a lot of times I could see where if you're bullish gasoline, you know, this, you know, tighter gas market than oil market, you can be long gas and short oil as a hedge. Um, but then you're really just diluting your idea that is right in that gas is going to go higher. You know, so, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not I'm not smart enough. I like to keep my positions concentrated, very simple, um, one directional, not levered. Um, I look for things that trade from the bottom left-hand corner to my screen to the top right-hand corner of my screen, and I look for chances to jump in and out in size sometimes on the way there. That's that's my bread and butter. Uh, oh, sorry if I did use a couple of last names. I probably that's why we cut them out. You didn't hear any of that. Um, Paul, favorite amplifier? Oh man, I have a Marshall uh, JCM twenty-five hundred or something like that that I love. I have a couple of tiny, small amps too that that work great. I have a PV Blazer that's pretty cool, and a um, a Black Star super portable, like you know, two battery amp that sounds unbelievable um, for the size of it. So check those out. If you um, pedals, pedals is a great question. I uh, for for some reason I, I broke my second cord connector and then I broke the one pedal that I had and that was the last I used of any pedals. I like to just get whatever sounds I can get out of the amps that I have and the in the hot rod guitars that I have, um, which includes that Fender American Stratocaster that I mentioned, a Gibson Les Paul Custom and no a Gibson Gibson Les Paul Custom and a what's my other one up there? Oh Gibson Songwriter Acoustic Guitar. Let's see here. Let's get back to the website and uh, see what questions we have coming. Oh, my God. This is a good one. Favorite beer round two of the Miller, Heineken, Coors, Corona choices. Two of those I wouldn't drink if I were on a desert island, just went swimming, and it was a thousand degrees out. And they were freezing cold. That would be Miller and Coors Light. I should posture it. Miller or Coors Light, those are no go to me. Garbage beer, bad for the tummy, not going there. Um, I do, I never mind a Corona with or without lime if it's heavy. If it's light, it has to have a lime in it. 
is the NFL more or less more rigged than markets? I don't know. I tell you, I stopped bidding. I stopped. Uh, I used to love to bet on the NFL. Um, I have a friend that runs an amazing website uh, called the hedgy.com, which is worth checking out. I think it might be on Substack now, but I really stopped betting on the NFL when I started building my house. And I realized that some of the uh, bets that I was making were going to cost me a kitchen set or a beautiful couch. I decided that I should just stop betting on football, build the house that I want with the couch on that I want and the dresser that I want and, and stick to that. Uh, Rao, my man, are you short of term? But have you seen the multi-year chart of copper looks explosive thoughts? Yeah, no, not at all, Rao. For you, my man, I would love to hug it out. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, yeah, let's uh, copper. You know, it's really fun. Go right now and, um, go hashtag copper on Twitter. It was a leading search on uh, not, you know, I, sorry, I, I don't know if it's search. It, it was leading in impressions earlier on my screen today on my Twitter feed. And I went into it and it's still all up there. I'm sure everything is so freaking bullish. And you look at the price and you're like, eh. It's okay. It's not great. Yeah, the long-term chart route, like I just highlighted in a presentation I gave, what I love about um, any security is when it's in a huge bull trend and pulls back and holds old yearly highs, right? So what we just held in copper down around 6,500 in the LME was the 2008, 17 and 18 highs, I believe, in copper around that level. And so we went down from there and then busted through it. And now we held that level on the downside. So that's as long a term as I get looking back like five or six years. Other, otherwise, I get I get dizzy and I, ver I get vertigo. Um, but also, um, it held those old highs. And then we got up through the moving averages and it was gone. So now the story persists. It's another supply side story, right? I will share one thing that was really interesting. One of the guys in my Slack channel was telling me about how, you know, there are credible stories about, in, and, and I don't have all the details. I have two papers to read tonight about it, actually, about how China is potentially taking metal, you know, off inventory and storing it um, where it's not getting counted, et cetera, et cetera, which I totally believe. But to me, that's bullish. And I don't think that they're going to go wailing away on that copper on the exchange or back into the markets at any point. That's probably stored up for their belt and road plans with Saudi Arabia and with India and the rest of the BRICS. Um, you know, they've got an entire Central Asia to pave over and I'm probably going to need a lot of copper in that process. So that's what I think is going on. And Rao, thank you for the great question. You're the best. Uh, wait, let's see where we are now. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, I think I got to everybody here. Let me just look at questions. Uh, do, 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 do. Are there any other questions that I haven't gotten to? How do you stay in shape while trading, Fuzzy Goozy? That's a great question. Um, I my my gym is the room right across from there, and I'm a Peloton freak. I love the bike. I love the treadmill. And I'm a free weights freak. I love um, dumbbells and I have a squat rack uh, that you can do, you know, squats, bench press, military press, all kinds of exercises on and a dip bar and all of that's all I need, man. You know, you get some uh, motivational videos or exercises, crank the tunes and get in there. And it is an absolutely necessary uh, part of your well-being. I'm, I'm like on the Zuby train where like um, you know, it, it's absolutely necessary to be taking care of yourself physically. Right. And the Joe Rogan idea, like one of the things that Joe said that, uh, always sticks in my head when I don't feel like working out, Joe is like sitting there one day and he's like, come on, man, father time he's trying to grind you down every day. You got to fight back. And I like that mentality of having something to fight back against when I need motivation. Um, so great question. Let's see if there's any questions in the Lou that I didn't on the line that I didn't find the Q, the Lou and the Q. I should probably start drinking more. Refiner is going to pay dividends in Q1. They are shutting capacity for maintenance. I, I think they are oh so quick. You know, the last uh, set of round of earnings in the refiners was a really, really good setup for Marathon, for Valero. 
Um, their margins are expanding. They beat on earnings. You know, they beat everybody's expectations. They all have a really, really positive view of the future. They're all buying their stock back. So, um, yeah, man, I think that those are going to continue to participate. Favorite current emerging markets, short term and medium, Eva, that's a great question. Um, this is one thing that I kind of learned while. I'm not going to answer your question, Eva, obviously, but I think there's a lesson in here. There was at least for me. I used to pay attention to all kinds of emerging markets, every um, external market. OK, I have a couple of good questions coming in. Um, external markets, every try to country in the world when I started my business in 2016. And I feel like the opportunities in maybe it was the opportunities in the US or that my track record was better in the US or that I just became so interested in the US or that the Biden administration gave me such an edge in the markets in the US that I just stuck to what's going on in the US and kind of not not tune out. Obviously, you 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 watch them peripherally, but I kind of tuned out the European stock markets and the emerging markets. And, you know, I keep an eye on the EEM ETF just to have an idea of where that's trading versus the rest of the world. Um, definitely relevant in understanding your whole picture um, and worldview. So that's really how I look at, at, at those. You know, they're kind of like, they're kind of like I always say, the bond market and the dollar. I always have, I, I always watch them. I usually have an opinion, but I almost never trade them, right? I use those as my speedometer to tell me how fast I can go in commodity markets where I feel like I have another edge and that uh, those markets will be the complement to help me keep pushing through. So let's see what happened. Gretsch or Les Paul? No, I don't have any Gretsch guitars, Vincent. I'm not sure if I answer that question. Any opinion on Bitcoin miners? I don't know enough about them. I'm sorry, Bernardo. Um, here we go. Jeffrey, his Raul Bearish Cayman real estate. That's funny. I'll tell you, have you been to the Caymans, mate? <laughs> There's no way to get bearish Caymans real estate. If you go stand there on the property, you bid for it automatically or somebody else will. It is an absolutely beautiful place, spectacular place to visit. And man, I mean, if I only lived here, it would be an amazing option for a place to have a second home for somebody that lives like I do 20 minutes from an international airport. Um, you can land, you know, you can take off being the Caymans in three hours and be at your hotel in three hours and 25 minutes. Um, that's the way I like to travel. So that's as appealing as Miami to me. Um, do we have any other questions? Let's see here. Support your local brewery. Great call. 100%. We have a great new brewery here in Long Beach called uh, Bright Eye, and I spend as much time and money there as I can. It's run by great people that also run a great restaurant. And, man, it seems like the way to go if you're going to open something up, open up a brewery. They're all They're all packed. Supro Amps. Thank you, Bernardo. I will check that out. Trappist Beer from Belgium. I hope I can go back and get all the good ideas. All right, I'm going to save this so that I can uh, get my new albums. Um, how about this? Maybe this enge encourages engagement. I thought of this. If anybody listening can submit the answer. So I have a stack of records back there. The Widespread Panic album is visible. If there are any non-subscribers... Oh, I'm going to I'm going to answer Eva's question. If there are any non subscribers that can name two of the vinyl record albums that I have. I will give you 50 percent off of a one year subscription to the Morning Navigator with a val street value of 400 US. So while anybody until I see any guesses to be able to uh, give that award out. I will uh, answer Eva's question. How do you square family time in such busy business? Well, it's easier now that I'm almost an empty nester. The only one left is my son. My two girls are in college. They're both doing fantastic because we raised ferociously independent girls. And my son just got his driver's license. So... He was the only one that we were constantly, you know, jockeying around to lacrosse practice and surfing all over the barrier island. And now he's going to be on his own. So 
that's how I juggle that time. But, you know, I do pay a lot of time and care and attention to them. They're the, my motivating factor. They're the reason I break down my office door every morning and get in here to make sure we've got the platform secure. And uh, my wife also, because she's a family member, we have to make time for her is in this house and that we get to do to see each other also because she works out of this house as well. So family time is not impossible. Why can't the Jets win? J E T. No kidding, man, right? Oh, here we go. Thriller and Back in Black. Great guesses. Nope, I don't have that. Back in Black is, oh, wow, I just closed the window. Uh, Mom is in the pop. No, Jimi Hendrix, no. Led Zeppelin, four. Yes, there's one, but Van Halen, two. No, Blonde on Blonde, no, 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 no. Where the med- uh, When the Medicine Takes, Zeppelin, two. No, I have Zeppelin, two. Where the Medicine Takes, I do not. Audio Slave, I don't have. That's a great one, man. Black Pink's latest album. Who is that? Um, so far, we've only got single albums nailed, and the na- the ones nailed are Zeppelin Two and Led Zeppelin Four. Um, any other gl- guesses can come firing in at any point. Um, I will tell you, no, Dylan. I love it though. Zep Four, and I, you can yeah, you can use the Zep Four or Zep Two and pair it with another album um pink floyd the wall no i'm not a pink floyd guy you know everybody really latched onto that and was in the stoner phase when i was in the jockstrap phase of my life and you know playing lacrosse uh at chaminade and cornell and that's when you know to me pink floyd was taking off in the you know they had already taken off but they were still huge people were attacking attaching to them and i just never did uh, because that was the stoner crew when I was trying to be a student athlete um, before I discovered marijuana. So that is one answer. And the other answer, uh, you know what? Let's keep let's keep drilling these down. Uh, Wildflower, Tom Petty. No, but I do want to get that album. Set for an Abbey Road. No, The Chronic, another great call. Did you buy your son a Tesla, Gray? That's funny. No, he is driving around in some beat up kind of uh, piece of crap beginner car where every beginner driver should start. Uh, YouTube boy, no, Thomas, I don't have that one either, but I, I, I should preface that I only have about 30 albums here and 100,000 favorites. So, you know, you can probably get, no, I don't have any Pearl Jam albums, man. What do I have in here? I know what I have and we haven't named it yet. Um, you know, what? why don't I just name a couple that I have this way? If anybody can comment, uh, here's one of my favorites. If you haven't absorbed this one on vinyl, man, is it amazing. You get, uh, you know, you you remember everything she does is magic and spirits in the material world, but you don't remember how good Hungry For You is on vinyl or Demolition Man. I mean, those were just head turn into too much information and humanize yourself. I mean, this album is a barn burner on vinyl. I, I advise everybody to get a hold of that one. Uh, Illmatic and Zeppelin 2. No, no Nirvana either. Oh, so quick. Most overrated band of all time. Stole all of Pete Townsend's My Generation chords and all that angst and put it in a different package in a ripped sweater and, um, you know, called it grunge and gave him credit for inventing it. I'm one of the few people around that I, I was, yeah, I'd listened to them back then. Never loved them back then. Now I think they're still one of the most overrated bands. And when I hear Nirvana come on the radio, I cringe and change the station. Uh, Zep 2, Marley, Exodus. No, but I do have a Bob Marley, Babylon by Bus on the way. Great call. Uh, No, I don't have, you know, I don't have any Hendrix. Hendrix is another uh, guy that I was a fan of, but never really a consumer of as much. You know, I don't know. I, I was just so much into so many metal bands when Hendrix was more popular. Um, Life Begins at 40 Million. I'd love that on vinyl. No. Um, Bread, Robert Overbay. No, I'm not that soft yet. Um, Elephant, White Stripes. That would be a great one to get, Bernardo. I like that idea. Black Sabbath. No, my heaviest one is right here. And this is this is one of this is one of the albums that I got my record player and then went down into my basement and desperately looked through all the boxes of old memorabilia that I have. And in it was this bad boy. 
Iron Maiden live in Japan, Maiden Japan running free, Remember Tomorrow, Wrath Childs, kill- Killers, and Innocent Exile, all live, all powerful as hell and unbelievable. Let's see what else we got. Born to Run, no, not a Springsteen fan either. Limit short. Um, no Cordettes, no Yardbirds, Frank, no, 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 no. Tom Petty, Damn the Torpedoes, literally one of my top five favorite albums of all time. Led Zeppelin 2 and Synchronicity, we have a winner. Andrew Lopez, right there. I'm, 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 uh, I'm writing this down because Andrew Lopez is the first one to name two. And I will figure out how to get Andrew. Andrew, you can um, email me or DM me on Twitter. And or I will figure out how to get your uh, name from Real Vision. Just come at me any way you can. Zeppelin 2 and Synchronicity are two albums that I do have. Great, great call. Switch to Brunello, Timothy Harris. That's great. Metallica, what album? What album? No, uh, Misfits, Van Zap, but Roxy. No, none of those. None of those. Corn, oh, so quick. I like them. No. All right. Red Hot Chili Peppers. I don't have any of them on vinyl, although I feel like I should. Bob Dylan, no, Eva. No, no, no. I, for some reason, I never. I, he can't sing. I need, a, I need a great vocalist no matter what. You know, and my favorites, you know, Tom Petty is one of my favorites. Um, I also love Eddie Vedder. I think that my favorite front man of all time is uh, Scott Weiland. David Lee Roth was one of the most electric front men to walk the face of a stage without question. Um, And you had to see him live to understand that uh, because he was unbelievable. Exile on Main, On the Way, got to be a top five album of all time. I love your style, Pablo Beefcorn. Um, No, but let's get some more market questions on there. No nine inch nails on vinyl. No, I, I like to look up and see what's available because Trent stuff probably translates really, really well. Um, you could probably just get one of the classic albums and uh, it would be amazing on vinyl. Mars Volta, not bad, not bad game, not bad. Um, yeah, Quadrophenia, I do have. I do have Quadrophenia on disc as one of the originals that I owned. So one of the 20, like I got 20 uh, albums out um, I had, that I had in a box out of storage. And I was so thrilled to find them. One of them was um, Motley Crue, Shout at the Devil. Um, what was the other album that you just reminded me of? Quadrophenia, that was the one. Quadrophenia. Was another one the night the uh, Iron Maiden album? Oh, literally got goosebumps when Ziggy Stardust was still in the pile. I mean, this thing, I, this thing, I, I I can't tell you how many hours I sat listening to in my life. So that was really really inspiring to find them, and it's been inspiring as a sort of content creator, you know, with a, a bit of a you know artistic task to to dig back into this music and, and hear it the way it was supposed to be delivered. It's been really, really fantastic. Um, so here we go. Do you see a low volume in this latest market top, Gray K? So what, um, my view on volume is like, it's not really a necessary, you know, put it this way. I love when volume confirms a move, right? But I'm a trader and my P&L is based on the direction and the sort of magnitude. Right. So if I decide that for some reason I don't want to get out of something because there wasn't enough volume to confirm the move lower through my stop, then I cost myself a fortune. You know, so also, you know, on the other side, you know, I do use volume to say if it looks like something is going through my stop and it's already trading high volume, maybe I start participating early. So that's a way that I kind of do look at that. Um, but I don't, I don't let it uh, be, have a be all and end all. Oh, favorite beer right here. Sapporo. Come on. I like that. I like that. We have this poll going on. Happy new year, Peter Cooper. You're the best man. Haven't seen you in a while. Hope all is well. Vinyl rules, George, right? George T. Uh, Smith's a Led Zeppelin volume on the market top. Shout love Eddie. Yep. Amazes me how 99% of us. Yeah, I can't move past music from our teens, right? Well, I tell you, hang on, hang on, right? Because I also, that's where I do Spotify, 
Spotify is where I have my, um, you know, my playlist with more modern music. You guys want to listen to some awesome stuff. Let me tip you to this band. I'm going to tell you a little story here because I'm going to take a half a second. Peter Cooper is a legend. I see that here. All right. Let me see this questions move on memes move. I don't even know what that is. Hang on. Oh, sorry. No, what was that? What, what, what story was I going to tell? Uh, da, 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 da. What story was I going to tell? I just lost a great story. Oh, the, uh, the song story. So I, have, I started back and forth with one of my clients who's a subscriber. And he's from South Africa. He's been subscribing for, for several years um, from Cape Town. And we get into a music discussion. And we start talking about guitars and I'm like, yeah, I got some great guitars, but I'm a hacker. You know, I can play a whole bunch of songs and probably not good enough to play in a band, but I love playing anyway. He's like, oh, you know, how about you? And I'm asking him, you know, what do you play? What's your interest? He's like, oh, well, you know, our, our band just came out with a new song. I was like, band. All right. Awesome, man. So you're you're real deal. Like, let's hear it. And he sends me a video of the song that they just came out with. And it was one of the most moving and eye-opening songs that I've heard in a long time because I don't have, like, like you said, we're so loyal to music from our childhood. I don't have a whole lot of faith in, in many newer bands. Um, and I listened to this band. They're called the West Coast Wolves, and they are on um, Spotify and most, um, most platforms. And their recent song, Knuckles Tight, is about letting your kids go in the world as they grow up and you kind of have to let them go to, you know, live world, live the life, um, their own way and, and to learn things their own way. So check them out. Their, their next best song is called factory of bones. In my opinion, they have an old one, um, called head on the tracks, but this guy is one of my clients and I would hire this band to play at any one of my parties tomorrow if they're available and I've actually, I've liked them so much that I haven't been able to draw a comparison between them and any other band really directly. It's just really, really well done stuff. And there are great videos on YouTube too. So they're a serious band with a great edge. Let's get back to this here. Best platform to follow technicals for a newbie foreigner who is just learning the way into us financial well platform i don't know i'm a little bit spoiled i have a bloomberg so i don't even i'm not the educated guy to talk to about what's out there there are probably a thousand other technicians that use an online or web-based service that works just fine um feel a cutie no i don't know that one bernard um Robert, o Robert Overbay, do you think Woodford and other shale plays in the Permian Basin are starting to play out specifically regarding PXD? Well, that's very stock specific for me. I am definitely not as studied as you because I do not know those specific situations. I can look at the chart and say that PXD is in an uptrend. It's consolidating here while natural gas is consolidating. I'm amazed that natural gas has fallen from 10 to 2 and PXD has fallen from 300 to 225. So it looks like it's outperforming the market and waiting for the natural gas tape to take off again. That's how I see a lot of the natural gas stocks and XOP, quite honestly. I hope I'm right on that when we look back on this 100 years. Is that gas dead, the Moss Man? No, it's been battling Mother Nature. And um, just in case you were wondering, Mother Nature is undefeated. How am I playing oil with the Turkey earthquake? I'm not factoring the Turkey earthquake into my oil trade. I am praying for those lost souls. When you watch a building collapse in the earthquake and imagine that there's some poor soul sitting on their couch or sleeping in their bed, it's just too much for me to deal with. I have to go walk outside and say a prayer and take a deep breath. That is just a horrible, horrible tragedy. MACD, I don't even use uh, G. I'm an RSI guy, you know, and and uh, I love when it's on my side, but I don't really let it kill me or talk me out of a trade. Feel a cutie, Pueblo. I'm going to check it out for sure. Um, I do want to bring this to a close if there aren't too many market questions, although I enjoy the music conversation and telling a couple stories. Um, but I do want to get to a couple of other things tonight, namely dinner. Um, and that's it. So if nobody has any other market questions, best and worst trades lately and why? Sure, I can speak to that, Arthur, Ar Artur, RV. Um, 
I'm going to say that my best trades, honestly, are I'm going to have to say getting out of, of some of the shorts that I put on in tech before they roasted me. Um, so that that's always, you know, you try to not look past some of the decisions that you made that may have cost you money, but could have cost you a lot more had you not been really nimble and nimble of thought and deliberate of action with that trade. So that's important. Um, the best trades for me are, are are the ones that keep proving themselves that I can buy on a dip. Um, like like this this refiner trade looks good. Um, I'm trying to think of what's been great or terrible for me lately. Latching on to like Spotify on the breakouts, semiconductors, SMH on the breakouts. You know, while I was not necessarily bullish tech, but if I cover up what the ticker is and I look at a chart and I say, "Holy sh!" And I want to buy that thing. I don't let the fact that it's a tech stock slow me down from buying it if it has a lot of upside. So, you know, that's how I look at that, if that's fair. Uh, Trillion X, what's for dinner? I love that. I love that. Joshua S. Yes, I love you guys. What's for dinner, though? I, I love that because one of the best um, channels in the TG Macro Slack group that I get so much enjoyment out of is the foodie channel. Um, I am the cook in my house. I cook probably six meals a night for uh what used to be five people down to three people now um but my son actually counts as two with the amount of food that he eats so what's for dinner tonight is i'm making uh basically italian wedding soup and i'm making grilled chicken with prosciutto burrata and basil on top of it uh you know a little um basil sauce on top of it so that should be delicious uh We've got a long, you know, I already started having a couple of Bud Lights, so I'll definitely have a delicious bottle of red with that um, and just relax for a little while and unwind, but I'm excited about that. Yeah, do one with Darius Desk for sure. I would love to participate in that. No to sugar. I agree with you, Robert. Robert, it's, it's the best thing that I've done is try to keep my sugar intake down, um, and I agree with you 100%. I think it's literally the worst poison that you can put in your body. And you can kind of reverse your way out of that by seeing how much of it is put in front of you at every counter of every CVS and pharmacy and deli and everything in the, in the world. It's just crazy. Oh, Mike Dahl, I'm glad you enjoyed the presentation in Vancouver. That was a great trip for me. I'm a huge, huge fan of Mike Campbell. He is a gentleman, a scholar, um, an elder statesman, and I wish he was my uncle, quite honestly. And I told him that at lunch with Kevin Muir, um, just a great guy to be in touch with. And, you know, anytime that he tells me that he's going to put me in front of 700 people that might like to hear what I have to say, I'm definitely going to get on a plane for a 12 hour round trip or whatever it is and come to visit him in Vancouver and speak at that conference. Subtly, uh, not the word I was looking for. Separately, let's choose that S word. Um, I, I heard one of the best presentations that I heard in a long time at that conference. And it was by a guy that's a real estate investor, a German real estate investor named Ozzy Jurek. And let me tell you, this guy is the Victor Borga of financial presentations. He had the place rolling. He had me rolling with simple one-liners either rel relative to his real estate presentation, which was brilliant or not relevant, but the guy was amazing. He, you know, he was a real lesson on if you were going to give a presentation, then get people to like you so they enjoy it. And that's what will help them enjoy it. Um, but I got to sit next to him then at the investor at the, uh, excuse me, speaker's dinner that night. And that was literally, I mean, I got to sit between him and Mike and, uh, Hearing some of the stories that those guys have is um, was just fascinating to me, and I love them both. I love spending time with them both. It was fantastic. Cranberry, you rock too. Thank you very much. You're a sweetheart. Um, Hi-Fi hi setup. I've got the Bob Marley turntable, man. It's uh, a great setup. I really, really love it. Yes, Nathan, I'm still bearish dollar index. You might quake me out of that idea if she gets back up above the 200-day moving average. And that's when I'm going to set my alerts for Bank of Japan, Bank of England, um, you, uh, any other Bank of China, anybody that can blow a hole again in the dollar, I think is probably going to be able to do it. So let's see what happens. Are you in uranium? Yes, I do have URA on my view matrix Pueblo beef corn. And I like the pattern. Um, I like the setup. I, I think that it's going to be a necessary um, pivot 
for baseload energy if we're ever going to get a reasonable carbon net zero program in place rather than the irrational one that we have in place now. Mm, great question. How many disposable lithium vapes do you need to recycle out of the parking lot to build my own Tesla? Joshua, brilliant, really good stuff. Second order line of thinking, which I really, really appreciate. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but if you come up with it, let me know. Um, let's see if I can bring anybody, bring something out. Oh, you know what? The, the, the price action in crude oil has been spectacular alongside the price action and inflation expectations coming back. So that's a theme that I'm really, really focusing on. Uh, do, 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 do. Real Vision Jack, do you follow, invest in metal royalty and streaming companies? No, I do not. Why URA and not the Sprott Trust, Kinky Contango? I didn't say I wasn't in the Sprott Uranium Trust. I may or may not be. No, I actually am in that as well. Um, I'm in that in a different place. I'm not in that on my view matrix, but I am personally invested in that and both, quite honestly. But on my view matrix for my um, navigator readers, I am not in that one yet, but I may buy it on a dip. We'll see what happens. Any views on 10-year treasury yield? Yes, trillion X. Um, I still think my bias is higher. You know, I still look um, at that long extended two-year period where they held them rates at zero like a beach ball underwater, and we knew the move out of there was going to be violent and accompanied by massive inflation. It's all panning out on our screens now, as we might have expected. Um, I feel like yields have rallied higher, and then we had the Federal Reserve taking on the inflation that the administration is causing, and now we're going to have that inflation probably claw its way back into the picture, and I think force yields higher again, or I think yields are going to force the Fed, keep the Fed's hand to the fire in their positioning towards remaining hawkish so that they can continue to fight headline inflation, which is going to continue to be a political problem. Uh, man, this questions are flying in here. I'm going to run out of time, but I'll go for a little while longer. What's the picture for grains for 2023 harvest? Um, Tony L., I'm not a grain specialist. Um, you know, they've run into some really, really rough tape, the grains. It looks like uh, I, I really don't have a strong opinion right now. It's been really whipsaw. They were well bid while energy was well bid during the Ukraine um, situation unfolding. And then like everything else, price came back to earth and kept going. So I'm not really sure what to make of the grain market. I don't have any trades on. I was long DBA last year. We might have come out of it with a 15 or 20 percent profit. It was a good trade, good ETF, I think. Um, it's long a lot of cash and treasuries, so it isn't a perfect hedge to the grain market, but it works pretty well. Palladium. Have you ever seen Palladium? No, me neither. That's why I don't trade it. Um, isn't having a Bloomberg kind of like paying for insider information? No, Robert, but it's a great analytical tool. Um, that is probably worth the $24,000 a year. Don't tell anybody that. If you know how to use it, it can certainly make you a lot more money than that. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting, uh, it's an interesting paradox there. And I'm not a big fan of the guy that runs the place either. Um, drink spot. And yeah, that's a good beer for sure. You know, you're a trend trader for lack of a, what are you following actively? Nathan, I went into that, man. I love the refiner trade. Um, that's the tip of the energy spear. If you like energy, like me, you're looking at XLE and XOP and you're saying, man, these trends are intact, even while the S and P is backing off. And that's really compelling to me. So I like those. Here's a good question. Hooplehead, any thoughts on the auto market, um, or real estate? No, I'm a kind of a permanent real estate bid and the idea that they're not making any more of it. Um, that's why I bought a piece of real estate near the ocean because they're making even less of that. And hopefully if I don't get washed away, I'll be able to sell this place for a profit one day. Um, the auto market is way too complicated for me, man. That thing went from <laughs> that thing went from bid only to show me a bid. And the way I see it is that there are going to be more bank foreclosures um, on vehicles, which are now, you know, the borrow is more than the cost of the car. And those are going to get um, that foreclosure is not the repossessed, I guess, is the right word. And that's going to be a big event that is apparently going to take place in America at some point soon. I'm hoping that it's uh, covered on YouTube so I can watch. I don't know how that's going to go. Have you explored the open double B as an alternative? No, I have not. Anchor Steam Beer, I'll give that one a shot. 
even though it's from San Francisco. Have you checked into what's happening with container rates? No, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not chasing down any container trades at the moment, Robert. I'm sorry, and I'm not well versed in that sector, nor have I been since I worked at Dalman Rose. Selling real estate in Charleston, South Carolina. Really, I, my daughter goes to the University of South Carolina, and I think it's an amazing, amazing place, man. Um, and I'm wondering, what's your opinion on it, Nathan? Um, you'll probably have a much better view on it than I do. Um, oh, Ed, Eva has a question here. Who is your go-to for macro advice and analysis? Macro advice and analysis. I have to say that I, uh, yes, I appreciate you guys. I'll answer. This is the last question, by the way. And it's another question, great question from Eva. So she deserves her question uh, to be answered last. And then we'll wrap this up. I think macro advice and analysis my my go tos, you know, for and I would call that sort of the people that I go to for my framework, if that, if that's fair. Um, my framework I get by listening to Grant Williams and all of the guests that he has on, and reading Doomberg and understanding his position on our energy policy, and also being able to talk to him about it privately. Um, but that's where I go for my you know main macro analysis. I also read um, Tommy Thornton religiously, Jared Dillian religiously, um, Brent Donnelly religiously uh, at Spectra FX. Um, those are the guys that help inform my opinions and shape my sentiment. And uh, man, they're the best that I think what that uh, what we do um, out there. And excuse me, Darius Dale as well. I'm sure I'm leaving out a couple of more people. Capitalist Exploits, Chris McIntosh, George Gammon. Um, you know, I pay really close attention. Um, I try to read anything Louis Gave says um, that gets out there. I think he's cooler than the other side of the pillow. Um, Hugh Hendry is a trip, isn't he, Pueblo? <laughs> that is funny. He is a trip. Raul, yeah, man. I mean, Raul is heavily focused on cryptocurrency, but I do listen to all of his views. It's really, really important to know. Um, yeah, and I think that that's it. No, Kyle Bass, though, I was 20 feet away from him when he was just about to go in and interview George W. Bush at the conference in Dallas. Uh, and I kind of was about to go over to him and make a real impression and give him a hug and like lift him off his feet and say, Kyle, you're my man. Um, but I decided not to do that and just kind of bow my head and walk past him like I'd been there before. Um, like a guy from New York probably should. Um, but man, I would love to meet Kyle Bass. If anybody has a way to introduce me to that guy um, and get him to sit down with me for 15 minutes to pick his brain, I would take it. Dave Rosenberg's another smart guy for sure. All right, gang, I'm going to wrap that up. I think that we answered everybody's question. We got some good conversations out, both about the markets, music, food, everything. Um, that's my kind of beer with Tony Greer. We went by there in about, I guess it was an hour and 30 minutes on the nose. And uh, thank you all. What a great uh, what a great run for conversation. If you would have told me that I would have been doing this for 90 minutes while people were firing away questions at me, I would have said no way they last that long. But luckily, I've got one more cold beer that I'm going to have before dinner, and I'm going to go enjoy that one now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Real Vision subscribers, and anybody else that may have chimed into this conversation. Hopefully, we'll be back to do this again soon. Thank you.